if you want to keep your people and keep them happy, you are going to have to do something different. Make an effort to get to know your people, connect with them, show them that they matter, make it a priority. Do you want a productive, profitable company? Get your team on board with you. Welcome to another episode of the Workforce Link podcast, where we're offering forward-thinking conversations for the workforce, linking employers and job seekers to a brighter tomorrow. I'm your host, Sunday Joe Graham with the Central Workforce Development Region, and I am excited to be back with you for another episode of this podcast. Motivating your team might not be as easy as it once was, you know, especially with the big elephant in the room going on all around us the employee shortage. Maybe your employees just don't have their heads in the game for whatever reason that might be. You know, when your employees, when your team aren't all in, your business suffers, right? That's why as a leader, you should be making motivating your team very high on the list of your priorities. In today's episode, we're going to discuss some ways that you can help motivate your team right away. We're actually going to discuss five ways. But before we dive in, I would love for you to share this podcast with others. Whether you're sharing with another business owner or a team member who might need a little help pushing through, let them know about this podcast, would you? We want to help as many people as possible win in the workforce. And word of mouth is the best way to make that happen. You and your friends can listen to the Workforce Link podcast on pretty much any platform, Apple, Spotify, or you can listen right on our website at theworkforcelink.com. We're everywhere, so it's easy for you to spread the word. And thanks already in advance for being willing to tell others about it. All right, so without further ado, let's dive into today's episode on how to keep your team motivated. So the first thing you want to do is have fun. I made this number one on the list and and some might disagree with me. That's okay. You know, you might think Sunday Joe, Hey, we have jobs to do, right? There's no time for playing around. Well, let me ask you this. Are you struggling to keep team members? If the answer is yes, this could be part of the reason why. If you want to keep people, you're going to have to think outside the box, okay? You can't keep doing what you've always done because guess what? It doesn't work anymore. Make time for fun no matter what industry you're working in. No matter what industry you're working in. That is so important, okay? So here's some ideas. Offer uh, weekly team lunches and do it on your dime. Some of you might be cringing at that, but I'm telling you, give it a shot, okay? I'm not just talking about bologna sandwiches and a bag of chips either. Offer your team a meal that they will enjoy. Take an hour out of each week and sit down with your team over lunch. Ask questions. Get to know them. Um, if If you're a leader of a large organization and maybe can't possibly get to know every single person, that's okay. Delegate that to your leadership team. Make sure they're getting to know their team members. But I will also say, figure out a way to get to know your people no matter how large the organization, because that speaks volumes to your people. Okay, here's another idea. Come up with some creative games to play at those lunches that you're having. Um, Maybe have some prizes for the winners. If you have um, uh, both in-person and virtual teams, then try to find some games that suit uh, suit both of those. Get, Get some fun competition going maybe. Or you could think of a fun office prank, you know, show people that you're not all that you're that you're not all work and no play. Right. Um, Here's another idea in the summertime, especially offer a family day for your organization. Have a barbecue in the parking lot. Get a bounce house. I'm telling you, entertain the kids too. show your people that you appreciate them because it goes a long, long way. So those are just a few ideas that I threw in, but I'm sure that you can come up with some, some more great ones. I would also suggest having a, a, an intentional planning meeting about how you can provide fun for your team. Be intentional about that. If you have a large HR team, bring them in too with some ideas. If it's just you, if you're just the only business owner, that's okay too. Tell some of your team members that you're thinking about doing this and get their input too. 
Uh, maybe send out a company-wide survey and ask everyone about it. Get everybody involved. Having fun at work creates bonds between your team and it will build stronger relationships. If you still think I'm crazy, give it a try before you just write it off. If you still think I'm crazy afterwards, that's fine. But promise me you're gonna give it a try. All right, so number one, you wanna have fun. Number two, create a supportive environment. So to piggyback off of building stronger relationships among your team with fun, doing this builds a supportive team, which leads us to this point of creating a supportive environment. So letting your employees know that you support them changes attitudes quickly and encourages them to work together, right? If they feel that they are supported by you and their fellow team members, guess what? Many of them, they're going to go to each other when they need some help with, with a project um, that they may be stuck on, right? Or, or maybe they're going to ask for extra input on ideas. Creating a supportive environment is an excellent motivator for getting results you want because it tells your team that you care. People are loyal to those that they know care. All right. So number two, create a supportive environment. Number three, encourage ownership. So make sure people feel like they have some ownership over projects. You know, give them clarity on a specific responsibility that they have. Allow them to take on a project on, uh, for themselves where they have to manage it, where they have to track the results for what they've been assigned. And sometimes getting that extra responsibility motivates them to go above and beyond what you've even asked them to because they feel trusted, right? And um, I'll say here, let me share with you what not to do, okay? Don't encourage ownership, then not stand by what you've entrusted to your team, okay? This is so important. In a previous episode, I briefly shared my story of being the assistant general manager at a fast food chain. Um, in case I forgot to mention, it was the worst job ever, and I am so glad that that season of my life is over. But here's why I want to share that with you. So the company's motto for all their employees was to act like an owner. This was like on, on every training manual and everything, act like an owner. So they, they wanted you to think about that um, in situations that you were faced with. So if you were the owner, how would you handle that situation, right? That's what they wanted you to ask. So here's the thing. It's a really great motto if you follow through with it. So on more than one occasion, the, the management above me, they wouldn't show up for work. They would leave me to run the restaurant. Well, we had crazy hours. We had to cover all the shifts, right? Days, evening, nights. I can't even imagine trying to do this right now in the middle of a pandemic. No, thank you. Well, one particular night I was closing and I showed up to work and there were only two employees. There was me and there was one other person. So the general manager was nowhere to be found. There were multiple call-ins, okay? Store policy was that you were supposed to have at least three people on a shift, okay? Which is crazy in itself. We're talking fast food, right? It's fast food. You can't really have fast food when you only have two people on, on staff. So here we are. It's 1 a.m. We had worked like crazy for hours trying to keep up with the demand, okay? We were running out of dishes, running out of food, everything that you could imagine. We still had four hours to go before we could close, before we were supposed to close. <clears throat> I had tried to get a hold of upper management. Nobody would answer the phone. It was chaotic, to say the least. So I went back to what I'd been taught as a leader, to act like an owner. So I stopped for a second and I looked around and I evaluated the situation. And I asked myself that question. If I owned this restaurant, how would I handle this situation? Hey, just want to interrupt for a quick second to tell you about something really amazing that's happening in the central region of Missouri right now. Are you a business owner who needs assistance increasing your profit margin and building a strong workforce? Well, now is the time to take advantage of our employer services. The Central Region Missouri Job Centers are ready to help. Available at no cost to you, we offer a variety of employer services, including job matching, consulting, work opportunity tax credits, on-the-job training, incumbent worker training, transition assistance, and more. You can get all the details at cwdregion.com slash employer services. Again, that's cwdregion.com slash employer services. 
We look forward to assisting you with all your employer needs today. And now, back to the show. So first of all, I would answer the phone when someone is trying to get a hold of me to tell me that my restaurant isn't properly staffed, right? You would think so. Second of all, I would not expect two people to run a multi-million dollar restaurant with a drive through line that runs nonstop all day long. As an owner, I would not put my people in that position. Why? Because I value them too much as my team. Thirdly, I wouldn't make my profit more important than my people. Let me say that again. I wouldn't make my profit more important than my people. So at 1 a.m., I decided to close the restaurant down. It took us four hours to clean the place after we closed it because I wasn't about to leave it, right? The, the way it was for the next shift, that wouldn't be fair to them. We cleaned, we did dishes, we scrubbed, and I don't know about my coworker, but uh, I cried a few times at least. We were exhausted, rightly so. But when I went home, I felt good about my decision. Because I acted like an owner. I took the motto to heart and I led by example. Are you ready for this? The next morning, while I'm trying to sleep from working a 12-hour plus shift, I get a call from upper management, who, need I remind you, didn't bother to answer the night before. Threatening me with my job because I closed the restaurant and I cost them money. I can't even make this up. Now, I am all about respecting leadership. Okay, but let me tell you, by the end of the phone call, I was not all that calm. I let them know that I did exactly what I was trained to do and I would not apologize for it. And I also let them know that if they ever put me in that position again, they wouldn't have to worry about firing me because I would walk out and I would not look back. And in case I forgot to mention it, did I mention that that was the worst job I've ever had in my life? Ugh. Moral of the story. As a leader of your organization, if you encourage your team to take some ownership, make sure you allow them to do so, okay? Make sure you allow them to do so. So number three, encourage ownership. Number four, allow your team to share their ideas. Consider hosting regular brainstorming sessions with your team. You know, allow, allow everybody to offer creative input, whether that's on projects or, or processes. Um, is something not working in your office or the factory that you're running or the construction project that you're managing, whatever the case may be. Ask the people that are in the grind, right? Ask those working on the line. Ask those sitting in the cubicles. Don't just get your input from the quote unquote top team, okay? Get ideas from those that are in the grind. This not only gets your team excited about uh, your projects and your, your company goals, It once again says, hey, guess what? I value what you have to say. This encourages your team to think creatively, to aim higher, to work more efficiently. And I would also add to this, if if you can make changes to where you have these brainstorming sessions, that would be great too. You know, don't just have it in the same space every time. Shake, Shake things up a bit. Shake your environment up a bit. All right, so number four, you want to allow your team to share their ideas. Number five, Tell your team that you appreciate them. So creating a fun environment shows your team you care about them, right? Building a supportive environment does that too. Allowing your team to take some ownership shows that you trust them. Allowing them to share ideas does that too. But make sure you tell your team how much you appreciate them. Don't just show them. Words matter. We actually did a whole episode last season on why our words matter. I'll share that link in the show notes for you. But tell them both publicly and privately that you appreciate them. Make sure you tell them that what they are doing matters. Let them know that what they've done right. Let them know how it's impacted your organization for the good. Maybe give them a gift card with a handwritten note or write them a short email. Present them with some kind of certificate for a specific achievement. Whatever it is, make sure you tell them. Tell them that you value them. One of the key motivators for people enjoying their job is to know that what they are doing matters. And for you to tell them means 
everything. All right, so let's do a quick recap of what we went over today in order to keep your team motivated. Number one, have fun. Number two, create a supportive environment. Number three, encourage ownership. Number four, allow your team to share their ideas. Number five, tell your team you appreciate them. You know, we are in a a strange season of life right now, right? Our economy is wonky. The way people work isn't the same as it was even two years ago. Every employer everywhere is hiring and every employer everywhere seems to be competing with one another, right? More than ever. If you want to keep your people and you want to keep them happy, you're going to have to do something different. Make an effort to get to know your people, connect with them, show them that they matter. Make it a priority starting today. If you want a more productive, profitable company, get your team on board with you. Get your team on board with you. Show them and tell them that they matter. I hope this episode was helpful for you today. And if so, please share with others. And if you haven't already, don't forget to go leave us a review. Have a great week and we'll meet again in the next episode. Until then, remember this. There's always a brighter tomorrow if you're willing to find it. The Central Region Workforce Development Board Incorporated and COPIC are equal opportunity employers and programs. Auxiliary aids and services are available upon request to individuals with disabilities. Missouri Relay Services at 711.